It's trilobites, horn corals, and those lovable sea lilies we call crinoids. We travel to Pendixie Fossil Park on this episode of Rock Hounding USA. Fifteen miles south of downtown Buffalo, New York, sits a 54-acre park, curiously nestled in a mostly residential area. But this popular attraction isn't filled with lush green grass or beautiful trees, or even with children playing on monkey bars. At first glance, it's actually an unattractive, desolate place, but her beauty is far more than skin deep. Welcome to Penn Dixie Fossil Park. Advertised as the number one fossil site in America, Penn Dixie is a geologist and paleontologist dream, with at least three distinct layers of sediment exposing fossil treasures for the young and old. I visited Penn Dixie on a hot day in the middle of July and was immediately greeted by staff who were both passionate and knowledgeable about what the site had to offer. What kind of stuff are we going to be finding today? Uh, a lot of horn coral, a lot of trilobites, uh, green ops, fake ops, um, some bellicarthritia, which kind of look like a green ops almost. Gadget, what's the most exciting find you've seen in the last few weeks? Probably a lot of trilobites uh, and wood also. Wood. Wood. Um, That's something you don't usually see together. Trilobites and wood. Yeah. All right. Well, I hear that it's trilobites kind of on the left, crinoids in the middle, and brachiopods on the right. Pretty much. Yeah. No sooner had my guide and I reached the edge of the collecting area when he bent down and picked up a fist-sized chunk of limestone. On its surface were the small but unmistakable remains of a trilobite, and then reached into his pocket and pulled out another fossil specimen, this time a brachiopod. After only a few minutes of collecting, I heard a scream of joy from a lady who was splitting rocks just a few yards away. This is not something that I found. You can hear the jealousy <laughs> in my voice. But uh, look at that beautiful, beautiful. We've got most of the body there, part of the head. Just absolutely fantastic. This is what you're finding right out here at Penn Dixie. All right, about 30 minutes in, reached in and look what has eroded out of the sediment here. We've got the eye right there. Only a partial, but kind of a nice little find there. I imagine that many people are in such a hurry looking at some of the bigger rocks and checking them out that they forget to look through the small rubble. And so as we look around, uh, look at here, so look at there. Don't forget to look through the small material, the crinoid stem. And so I found a couple of small partial uh, trilobites that have weathered out as well as a bunch of horn corals. So don't despise the little stuff. Look through the little remains and you, you might find some treasures in there as well. Well, time is rapidly running out. I am leaving the quote unquote trilobite areas behind here at Pendixie and I'm making my way towards the middle section, which they say are more rich in crinoids. And then the farthest section, or as you come into the park, the area on the right, more of your brachiopods. And so uh, we'll see. They say the crinoids are fairly small and that heads are very, very, very rare. So we'll spend just a few minutes looking around, then we'll head over to the breaking pods and we're gonna have to call today. Only about 90 minutes to spend out here at Pendixie, not nearly enough. And I've uh, got a few treasures, which we'll show you at the review and wrap up. So let's see if there's any crinoids out here we can take home. Well, about 10 minutes of looking around what is called the crinoid area here at Penn Dixie. And uh, hey, nothing too exciting, only one nice little crinoid there, and certainly not a spectacular crinoid by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but as they say, even a bad day of hunting fossils is still better than a good day in the office, right? But uh, a lot, you know, I think they should rename this uh, area of the collecting site Horn Coral Ridge, not uh, the crinoid area, because the horn coral are certainly far more numerous. I found one piece that I thought was a nice little crinoid stem and after I cleaned it with some uh, water or as my friends over at Heartbreaker Relics YouTube channel say DHMO, uh, after we cleaned up with a little bit of water found out it was actually a bullet casing. So anyway we're gonna head over to the brachiopod area and then gotta head out. It's about closing time here at Penn Dixie.
Well, I just spent the last few minutes of the trip here to Penn Dixie kind of rummaging through the broken pieces of material here in the brachiopod area, as they call it. You know, you're just looking typically for things that have weathered out uh, of the matrix. The staff is incredibly helpful. It's an expansive area. Uh, I think it's really good. They're bringing a lot of kids out here for field trips and educating them regularly. I'm going to head on out here from Penn Dixie in, near Buffalo, New York. Been a great day. Been to Niagara Falls and now been fossil hunting. So we're just enjoying nature and creation, and it's, and it's been great. Uh, we'll see you at the wrap-up and review. Uh, but lots and lots and lots of pieces, and, and there goes the hat, and boy, it feels good. So great time here at Pendix. <laughs> There goes the hat. No one leaves Penn Dixie empty handed. Even in the short 90 minute time span that I visited the site, I came home with a nice selection of aquatic fossils. Horn corals were very abundant across the entire exposure, both in the matrix as well as loose free specimens. The level of detail in the preservation is quite nice. I only uncovered a few crinoid stems and no calyxes or crinoid heads. And once again, the fossilization process has yielded surprisingly good detail. Penn Dixie's claim to fame is the trilobite. But before I show you my finds, let's get positive and negative. Fossils are typically either casts or molds of a creature or its effects. Casts and molds of trilobite parts are almost common in Penn Dixie, but a full body fossil is a rare thing. For the most part, I found the pygidium, or tail section, of the genus Phacops. Most of these were no more than a half inch across at best. This is a mold of a trilobite thorax, and I almost missed the mold of the Phacops cephalon highlighted here. I also found this small but very detailed Phacops glabella, which is the center of the head between a trilobite's eyes, if you will. There were quite a few trilobite sections that had eroded out of the matrix, many of them rolled up or partially rolled up, here are two different views of one such specimen I discovered, just over an inch wide. I've been told that the park excavates large portions of new material each spring, and I'm just going to have to plan another trip to coincide with that exciting prospect. It's the Penn Dixie Fossil Park. Get ready for layers and layers of fun and discovery. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel and if you get a few moments, hop on over to our web store where we have great rock hounding t-shirts, sweatshirts with just that right message for the rock hound in all of us. Thanks.